Okay, so moment of inertia is first topic of rotation motion, and we'll continue with other topics later on. Okay, so first of all, very quickly, let's understand why moment of inertia is necessary and why it is defined in a particular manner. So just to understand that part, suppose we have a light point mass M attached to a light rod of length R, or it could be a string also. So it is rotating and this mass is M and it is attached to a length R. It undergoes uniform circular motion with angular velocity omega. Okay, what is this kinetic energy? So if we have kinetic energy, if you just take as a linear motion, in this particular instance, it will have velocity. It V will be equal to R omega. So I can write kinetic energy the way I write in terms of linear motion. Kinetic energy equal to 1 by 2 mv square. This can be written as R omega. So kinetic energy can be written in terms of uh, circular motion parameters, m R square omega square. But if I compare this kinetic energy to this parameter here, omega is corresponding to V. So this term here, what I see here, this is what you call as rotational equivalent of uh, inertia. And this is something like rotational inertia, which is MR square. And another way to understand also, if there are multiple parameters, so MR square is similar to M in case of translation. And even better, we can what you can understand, if not a single particle, if uh, a rigid body is undergoing rotation about some axis, it is composed of several particles. See, if we have to calculate kinetic energy as 1 by 2 mv square, all particles will have different velocities, different magnitude of velocity also. It becomes very complex because velocities are different. But if it is undergoing pure rotation, all particles will have same value of omega. Thus, beauty of rotation motion, every single particle will have same value of omega if it's undergoing rotation. In that case, it makes more sense to write kinetic energy in terms of omega parameter. And we write in terms of omega, we need this term here, and this term is what we define as rotational inertia or moment of inertia. And that's why it makes more sense. And if this is for single particle. If there are multiple point masses, moment of inertia is scalar quantity. We can add it up for all particles. If there are 10 particles, there are 10 to term MR square. And if important point, every time we think of moment of inertia, we need to keep in mind, it always depends on first, it has to define what is the axis of rotation. Then only get the same object may have different moment of inertia, depending on change of axis of rotation. And R is measured from there. And this is for several point masses. If it is continuous mass, we divide into several small point like mass. If you take very small piece of continuous mass system, it becomes like a point mass. And then we just we write dm into r square. And what is the dm here? If it is a linear mass, lambda into dx. If it is a planar mass, mass per unit area into dm. It is three-dimensional object, it's a density into dv. That we can write and we can integrate, we can get a moment of energy. So let's continue with the understand moment of inertia here. So what is this time? Let's try and understand it. what is the term R here. See, the rotation, as the term suggests here, whenever any object undergoes rotation, every single particle in the object will move into a circular path. Even if it doesn't complete full circular motion, it will move in an arc of a circle and it will have an axis of rotation. So R is the distance of the particle from axis of rotation. And in a better way, you can say it is what is R here is perpendicular distance of the particle from the axis of rotation. There's a line and particle. So let's first understand moment of inertia of a single particle. Single particle moment of inertia is MR square. R being the radius of circle describe the particle, or you can say perpendicular distance of point from axis of rotation. So to find R, I need two things. What are two things I need? I need axis of rotation and position of the particle. Once I have axis of rotation, I drop a perpendicular, perpendicular from the point where particle is placed onto axis of rotation. That becomes my R. So is, in case of less understand, see, so this is for a single point system, moment of inertia, MR square. That's what we need to understand. R is with reference to axis of rotation. Rest all is adding it up. It's a scalar quantity. So let's take case of two point mass system, and they're connected by rod length L. So these are two point mass system, A2M and B2M. 
and when it is connected by light rod, it can be rotated in multiple ways. There can be different axis of rotation. Hence, the depending on each choice of axis of rotation, it may have infinite number of moment of inertia as possible. But we see defined axis, so let's take an axis passing through and perpendicular to A. So where is the axis here? The axis is passing through A and perpendicular to A. So perpendicular, it could be in the plane also. It could be pointing towards us or away from. It could be perpendicular to plane of paper. So let's take axis is passing through A and perpendicular to the plane of the figure. So if that's the axis, try and visualize if that is axis, how would this system rotate? That's how the system will rotate. Okay. So when it, if that's the axis, so radius of rotation of B or perpendicular distance of B from axis of rotation will be equal to L. Whereas if axis passing through A, this radius is zero. So if it is particle, it will have zero moment. So if we take in that case, what is moment of inertia? If uh, is that this is axis of rotation, M into L square. A will have zero distance. Now we take different cases. We can take axis passing through central mass and perpendicular to the rod. So I can identify the center of mass will be equal to a distance of L by 3 from here. This is the center of mass. And how is the axis? Axis is, again, perpendicular to rod towards us. If I rotate about this axis here, visualize what this axis is. The axis is, if this is lying in the XY plane, I'm taking axis in along Z axis, Z direction. If it has to rotate, how would it rotate? This will rotate like this. When you rotate like this here, what is the perpendicular distance for this mass? This is R, and for the second mark, this is the R. So you need to learn and quickly identify what the radius of circular motion is, and then we can add it. Let's come to a simple case, and I will do in variety of applications here. So we are just calculating for point mass system. Point mass system, no need for integration, is just summation of moment of inertia of each particle above one, and R is from the axis of rotation. So we have taken a simple system, four identical point masses, all are M. And uh, they are connected in the square, and side of the square is L. It forms the square and is lying, let's understand, is lying in the xy plane. And z axis is perpendicular to the plane of the figure, as is the common practice we use. Let's take a different type of axis and let's understand in each case how moment of inertia will be. First case, I take a passing to center. Uh, passing through center and sorry, and parallel to two sides. So what is the axis here? Passing through center and parallel to the two sides. This is how to rotate. If it is passing through center and parallel to two sides. You understand what is the axis we have taken? This axis of rotation. And if this is the axis of rotation, moment we set into rotation, and both the points here, all four points will move. Initial velocity will be perpendicular to plane of the figure. You understand how to rotate. And in this case, for this particle, this is the radius of rotation. This is R. This is axis. This is perpendicular distance. So both the particle, all four particles have equal distance from the axis of rotation, which is L by 2. So moment of inertia is fairly easy. And let's take second case. So all in this case, what will the moment of inertia? Each particle R is equal to L by 2. Let's take second case. Let's take mobile. We'll go through multiple cases so that all of you get a good sense of what is axis of rotation. If one of the side of the square is the axis, and if I rotate, see, you can do that one. You can form this kind of shape and try and rotate. If I rotate about one side of the square, how would it rotate? This is how it will rotate. So in this case, what will happen? So this is the, these two R values 0. These two R values L. For two particles, so two of them R is equal to L here. And for other two particles, R is equal to zero. So moment of inertia, 2M into M into L square for each particle. And we can easily find moment of inertia. Now let's take so far what we have taken. We have taken the axis in the plane of these four particles. All cases are taken axis, which is lying in XY plane. Now let's take axis perpendicular to the plane. So understand the difference, notice the difference, understand the difference. If axis is perpendicular to the plane of figure, the particles will remain in the XY plane only. Okay, so if axis perpendicular plane of figure, particles will move in only in XY plane. Okay, if it is planar particle. So let's take per axis perpendicular plane and passing through center. How would it move? So this axis, where the axis, now axis is perpendicular to the plane. So particles will move in XY plane itself. How would they look like? This is how they will rotate. If this rotate here, what is the perpendicular distance? Perpendicular distance, each particle, this is a perpendicular distance. And it is same for all four of them. 
And what is the perpendicular distance? Each r is equal to l by root two. So I'll calculate m by r square for one particle multiplied by four. That's the moment of inertia. Let's take axis perpendicular to plane and passing through one corner. If this axis, if I change, choose axis is perpendicular to plane passing through one corner. So since axis is perpendicular to plane, particles will move in the same plane only. They will not move perpendicular plane. And this how it will rotate. So if it rotates like this, this uh, this one uh, L, this one is L, and this radius will be equal to root two L, and we can easily multiply and calculate. Okay, so that's we easily get. So for, for two of them it's R, and for one of them it's root two L, and we can obtain moment of inertia. So so for finding moment of inertia for particles, system of particles about an axis lying in the plane of figure. Or perpendicular to plane of figure should be simple, and easily we should with some little uh, uh, clarity in mind easily can get our answer. Now let's take some more case. So not particles. Now take a continuous mass system. So mass is still lying. We have taken mass which is lying in one plane. So one plane mass. So we'll look at mass which is lying only in one plane. So this is lying in x y plane. Let's take a simplest example. Moment of inertia of ring about its axis. So what is the axis here? This is lying in x y plane. Axis is a, a passing through a center and perpendicular to the plane. So axis is either I can write along k cap or z direction. If it rotates, how would every, if I set into rotation about this axis, how would every particle rotate? Every particle will rotate tangential direction in the plane of the figure. And what is the distance? The distance will be equal to r. Okay. All points move in a circular path of radius r. So, what is the moment of inertia? If I take a small piece here, what is the moment of inertia of this mass is dm? This mass, uh, I will take its perpendicular distance from axis, and uh, perpendicular distance is r square. This moment of inertia would be dm into r square. If I add it up, it becomes total m into r square. So, why? Okay. So, what we understand here, see, this is something everywhere is all are e at equidistant. So, if entire mass rather than having mass distributed over a circular ring, if entire mass, whatever mass the ring had, if entire mass is placed only at one point on the ring, is still the moment of inertia remains same. Or if I distribute this mass not uniformly, any random fashion, I distribute the mass over the ring here. The moment of inertia will not change because the distance is not changing. So in this case, whichever manner it distributes, moment of inertia about z axis will remain the same. So what we understood, if we rearrange the mass about an axis without changing its distance, moment of inertia will not change. And that's a simple important point we can use and which makes some of the things easier to understand. So other than having this entire mass, entire mass I bring a place at one point also. Entire mass M is placed at one point and still the moment of inertia remains unchanged. Second thing what we notice here, if I rotate about, so far previously I have written, rotated about axis, about axis of the ring. When we say axis of the ring, it always passes through center and perpendicular plane of the ring. Now we are rotating about two axes which are passing through center, but mutually perpendicular lying in the plane of ring. If I rotate about x axis, you notice here. So the moment of inertia because of symmetry, I think most we can easily understand. Ix is equal to Iy because of symmetry. That's basically what is Ix and Iy? They are interchangeable. Just we are sitting here. If we change our position, anything could have been x or y. As long as passing from center. Thus, gives an, uh, if something like this, Ix is equal to Iy, that leads to a, something called perpendicular axis theorem. So perpendicular axis theorem is valid only for mass which is lying in a plane. So it is either a lamina kind of thing, it's a sheet of mass. Moment the mass is not in a plane, perpendicular axis is not valid. So what is perpendicular axis theorem in terms of simple equation? This is a simple equation here. And what does this mean here? What is Ix and Iy? I and Xy is moment of inertia of a mass system lying in a plane about two mutually perpendicular axes lying its plane is equal to moment of inertia about an axis which is perpendicular to the plane and passing through the point of intersection of these two. So here I have taken X and Y. 
And when I take IZ here, IZ also, there could be several different axes which are parallel to Z direction. But which axis we are talking about, it must pass through the point of intersection of these two axes. That's a perpendicular axis theorem. So we can apply, so basically in this case, if in case of ring, we know what is Ix and I, uh, we know Iz, Iz very easily can be calculated. This is equal to Iz, we already arrived at MR square. Since Ix and Iy are equal and some of them is equal to Iz, it easily leads to conclusion Ix is equal to Iy. Hence, it will be equal to half the moment of inertia about z axis. So, moment of inertia of a ring about z axis is mr square, ix and iy both are equal to mr square by 2. Okay. Let's understand in case of rectangular sheet, if you have rectangular sheet kind of thing, this also is a plane mass lying in one plane. Uh, let's take two sides, uh, one side parallel to x axis is L, and other side is B. One side is L, other side is B. Okay. Uh, two sides parallel to this. Okay. Mass is m. So, what is moment of inertia about y axis? So if I rotate this mass about moment of inertia about y axis, okay, how we find moment of inertia? This is how mass will rotate. And this mass, how like, you should visualize. And this axis, now we are taking an axis which is lying in the plane of the sheet. So, when if I take a narrow strip parallel to y axis, we have seen how it rotates. Let me take an axis. I'm rotating about y axis. If I take a narrow strip of this rectangular sheet parallel to y axis, and any particle on this narrow strip is at equal distance. So, if uh, this entire mass which is lying in the narrow sheet, if entire mass I bring and place at only one point, so I have rearranged the mass into a point mass. The strip has become a point mass, but if I do so, this distance from x axis has not changed, hence the moment of inertia also will not change. That's important point. So narrow strip parallel to if dy will be same as that of the point mass. Now I place the entire mass at one place. And if I do so for all narrow strips here, all narrow strips, um, see basically if narrow strips, if I take every narrow strip of width dx, all will have same area. And if it is a uniform sheet, if area is same, mass also will be same. So it will become a, if I keep placing everything along one particular line, I can replace with the rod. So moment of inertia of this sheet here about y-axis is equivalent to a rod of length L. Because when I'm taking moment of inertia about y-axis, distribution of mass parallel to y-axis something you can remove. So I, if I keep placing, it becomes a rod. And that's why Iy is equal to ml square by two, same as a rod. Similar way, if I write what is Ix equal to, Ix will be equal to mb square by 12. And that's why what will Iz be equal to in this case of uh, z-axis? Iz here will be equal to Ix plus Iy will be equal to ml square, uh, ML square by 12 plus mb square by 12. My rectangular sheet, that's what we do. And what we notice here when it rotates about y axis, the radius of rotation varies from 0 to L by 2. And that's why L dimension will end. And nothing, the B doesn't come into picture. When I rotate about x axis, it, the uh, radius of rotation varies from 0 to B by 2. This dimension becomes relevant here. And that's it. Okay. Iz, that's how it will rotate. And what would Iz be equal to? Ix plus Iy, which will be equal to. Uh, and if it rotates here, uh, what would be the maximum possible radius? Maximum possible radius would be of this point, and that's with the radius. Now, coming to moment of inertia of any cylinder about its axis. We have done it for a ring. And we have understood in case of ring also, if you place the entire mass at one point, also moment of inertia does not change because we are not changing the distance from. Z axis. Similar way, if I take a thin cylinder, thin cylinder also, but the entire cylinder, but whatever mass, if I have it here, this entire mass I can shift to a ring kind of thing. So, per se, all these narrow strips, if I shift this entire mass parallel to Z axis, place it at one top point here, so it will become like a ring. So, moment of inertia of a thin cylinder is equal to moment of inertia of a ring about z axis. This we are talking about, this we can do only about z axis. In z axis only, we can do that. So, moment of inertia, every particle in the thin cylinder is at the same distance. 
So it is whole entire thing. You see, you notice here any part on the cylinder will take the distance same. So entire mass can be placed at a distance equal to r. So I first I can imagine I can place it on a ring, but ring also equal to point mass. It is equal to m r square. That's the moment of inertia. Okay. So similar to moment of inertia, but in the distance. Now, moment of inertia of a disk. When the disk, I'm not, uh, how do we calculate moment of inertia of a disk? We know moment of inertia of a ring. So disk also can be, think, we can think of disk as several concentric rings. And through integration, I can calculate moment of inertia of a disk, which becomes, for ring, it is MR square about Z axis. For disk, it becomes MR square by two. And we should remember at least four formula, which we had dealt with earlier. So it is smooth. So let's see that. I hope uh, you remember that formula. Moment of inertia of a uniform circular disk about is any diameter is MR square by four. IZ is equal to MR square by two. Okay. Now, if we rearrange the mass without changing distance, so what will happen? Say, if uh, so if we have put a moment of inertia, what I have understood, moment of inertia depends on distance from the axis. If I shift the mass in a such a way, distance from axis is not changing, this moment of inertia will not change. Let's see how we can rearrange and what are things we can understand from here. See, if the disk is folded about x axis, so basically what I do, the lower part, the disk also assume that this disk is foldable. I fold about this axis, so this part also comes on the top. It becomes only top part. When I fold, let's imagine, suppose there's only one particle here, which has some coordinate x i y i. So when I fold about x axis, what is happening? Y coordinate is not changing, changing. X coordinate only sign is changing. When the sign is changing, it basically means if I fold, this point will land up here. Its distance from x axis or y axis remains unchanged. And again, after folding about uh, x axis, again suppose I fold about y axis again. So I'm just taking a sheet, take a circular, fold about this line first. And after folding at this line becomes top uh, semicircular disk. Again, I fold about this line, it becomes like a quarter of a circular disk. But when I have a quarter of a circular disk, has the moment of inertia about x axis or y axis changed? It has not changed. Okay, when I fold, just understand when I fold this any point here, the sign of any coordinates are changing. This distance from axis is not changing any random point you can take. Since the distance is not changing, moment of inertia, if I fold like this, it becomes one fourth of the disk. Again, moment of inertia, x axis is same, y axis is same. And since iz is equal to sum of these two, z axis also moment of inertia remains unchanged. Okay. And uh, if I take a, a second thing, what we can understand, this is one part we can understand. Second part, if I, if I have a circular disk, it has certain moment of inertia. And if I take one fourth of the disk, you know, each part of the disk is symmetrical. If the total moment of inertia is I, one fourth of the disk will have a moment of inertia I by four. So moment of inertia, see, if I take divide into this kind of segment also, if I take a segment which makes an angle theta, if total moment of inertia of the entire disk was m, if I cut only this part, when I'm cutting this part, what is happening? Mass also is getting reduced. What will the moment of inertia? Moment of inertia will be in proportion to this angle theta here. So if I take uh, what is i theta, uh, a segment of a circular disk with subtend an angle theta here, it will be, it will get reduced in the same proportion. It will be called theta by 2 pi into i, that moment of inertia. And what is theta by 2 pi? I can apply this theta pi to m also. I could write it theta by 2 pi by into m is nothing but mass of this green portion. Mass of green portion will be, is it, that mass will be in proportion to the angle theta. So m dash, if I write the mass of the green portion, will be equal to mass of the circular disk. And so and this is per unit angular and into theta. That is m dash. So what is the uh, moment of inertia of what you may call as a pizza pi? The pizza pi moment of inertia will be equal to one by two m dash r square. M dash is the mass of this part alone about z axis. This I right now I'm talking about z axis only. So any pizza pi does moment of inertia. So if I take this shape here, so if this shape has mass m dash, radius is r, and it's a segment of circular disk. What would be this moment of inertia about this point, about z axis perpendicular to this plane? It will be equal to one by two m dash r square. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, most of the formula, what we have here, Sir Pignesh? Sir, in this case, uh, the same thing won't apply to x and y axis. No, sir. it won't. Not x and y axis. Because it depends on the relative yes. distance. Yes, relative distance will change. Until this point here, up to till I made for, for uh, until this point, it will be same. And this is easy to understand. I hope you understood what that point. Yes, sir. Like you can fold it infinite number yes, of times. Yes, infinite number of times. Okay. Let's look at the parallel axis theorem. So what is parallel axis theorem says? Most of our formula are about an axis passing through central mass. But if axis we don't rotate about central mass, suppose axis or rotation is not passing through central mass. Still, we can find uh, if I know the formula of axis passing through central mass, I can use parallel axis theorem. This is parallel axis theorem. So what does parallel axis theorem say here? First of all, uh, this axis, if I have to find moment of inertia about axis passing through point A, ICM is an axis parallel to this axis passing through central mass. Both these axes must be parallel to each other. One is passing through central mass, other is not passing through central mass. And D is the distance between two axes. So that is moment of inertia, parallel axis theorem. I think. So let's understand parallel axis theorem in a very simple way. So let's see this is n rod here. If this is axis of rotation, then we know the formula only about moment of inertia passing through central mass, which is ml squared by 12. So if I have some other axis, uh, and I can use parallel axis theorem, and let's see this axis about which it is rotating. And so if I have to find moment of inertia about this axis, I first visualize an axis parallel to this. So this axis is lying in the plane of figure, my axis passing to central mass also must lie in the plane of figure, and this is passing to central mass. So when I have two axes parallel to each other, the distance by a parallel lines, distance is fixed. Uh, this is the distance. So moment of inertia, if I apply here, ML squared by 12, which is ICM passing to parallel and M into D squared, and we can apply. But uh, some of uh, you know, some of you may remember this moment of inertia about uh, end point about an axis passing through the end of the rod and perpendicular to the rod, we, we also remember ML squared by three. Can I apply parallel axis theorem between this axis and this axis? No. Why can't we apply? One of the axis must be passing through central mass. Then only it is valid. And it's valid for all shapes. Okay, so not with, don't expect a use with respect to the end formula. Let's come some more application of parallel axis theorem. Okay, so let's look at what are we trying to find. Let's take a sort of ring and try to understand how we apply parallel axis theorem. So if this is a ring, if I had drawn an axis, the moment you see the figure, first thing you should come to your mind, this axis lies in the plane of the ring. It is not perpendicular to plane of the ring. So axis is in the plane of the ring and it is tangential to the ring. Okay, I have to find moment of inertia about this axis. So first of all, if you have this axis mentally, you should be able to uh, picture, you should be able to mental get a mental picture how would this uh, ring rotate. And you can easily do so. You can connect a ring to uh, and keep a, a kind of, a, you can take a thing, knitting, uh, what you call as a knitting stick or something, and you can do that. That's how it will rotate. Okay, so it will rotate, per, you know, axis is in the plane. So all particles will rotate in a plane which is perpendicular to axis. It is rotating perpendicular to plane of the figure. That's the plane of rotation of every single particle. Every single particle will undergo circular motion. How do you find moment of inertia? I apply parallel axis theorem. So first I visualize this axis lies in the plane of the figure. Parallel axis also must lie in the plane of the figure. Sorry, plane of the ring. So this is the ring, this is ICM. So what is ICM? ICM is the moment of inertia about the center lying in the plane of the ring. And if it is lying in the plane of ring, moment of inertia is m r squared by 2. And that distance, perpendicular distance is r into m d square. I get this moment of inertia. Similar way, now this case, what you notice here, how is the axis here? Unlike previous case, it is also through a point. This earlier was in the plane of the ring. Now I'm taking axis perpendicular to plane of the ring. So just first you visualize how would this ring rotate about this axis. Now every particle in the ring will move in the plane of the figure only. If axis is perpendicular plane of figure, every single particle moves in the plane of the figure. How would this rotate? Axis is perpendicular and ring will rotate its own plane, something like this. And for rotation, it need not be complete full circular motion. So we, how do we calculate? So we understood, I hope you have understood. So I have to take parallel axis since 
axis about which I need to find moment of inertia is perpendicular to plane. Parallel axis is also perpendicular to the plane. And this is something like this is z-axis. So when, whenever planar figure, I can think of the z-axis. So this up, uh, and so what is ICM? MR square by two, unlike previous case. Okay. So when I write ICM, MR square and plus MR square. Okay. So you understand difference between the two. So this is a good example, simple example to understand how uh, when the axis is in the plane, perpendicular to the plane. And this is something understanding this difference when is in plane and when it is perpendicular is important for such kind of solutions. Let's continue with some more application of the same. Two identical rings are connected by rod, right, light rod of length L. And so this from this point to this point, length is L. And these are two rings of mass in M radius is R. Find moment of inertia, axis perpendicular to the rod and passing through the midpoint. And if I draw a figure here, as soon as I look at the figure, I notice this axis, if I draw the axis like this, if the exam also question comes like this, this axis is in the plane. And if I put dot kind of thing, then only becomes perpendicular. So it is in the plane of the rings. Okay, so if I have to find moment of inertia of these two, first thing I understand both are symmetrical. What a moment of inertia one ring has, other ring also will have same moment of inertia. I can find moment of inertia of one ring and multiply by two. So let's take, if I'm calculating one, let's visualize parallel axis theorem. So if I have to find moment of inertia of this axis, first I visualize here, axis, parallel axis passing to central mass. So this is a parallel axis and this will become my D distance. And this axis is lying in the plane of the ring. If you're lying in the plane of ring, what is ICM in that case? MR square by two. And since it is a plane and distance is L by two here, D. So I calculate moment of inertia of one ring, ICM plus M into square of the distance. That moment of inertia of one ring multiplied by two, I get moment of inertia of four rings. Let's look at uh, something like this. So, uh, if you can remove some part, a uniform disk is made of mass M and radius 2R. Okay, so mass is M, radius is 2R. And if a concentric circular disk of radius R is cut and removed, then what is the moment of inertia of the remaining part as shown in the figure about its axis? So when I will say axis, about its axis, actually it is Z axis. So what is the axis here? Axis is perpendicular to the plane of finger. Okay, so per, per moment of inertia is a scalar quantity. So whenever cavity is created, it's something we have done it before in mass of uh, amount of inertia in, in case of central mass also. So uh, mass also this something. So this figure mm -hmm. plus this is equal to this, or this is equal to a minus b. So I can calculate amount of inertia of a. I can calculate amount of inertia of b. So what is this shape? This will be equal to i a minus i b. That's what I have to calculate. I have to calculate moment of inertia of full disk and I have to cal cal calculate the moment of inertia of the removed part. Both about which axis? About this axis. And mass of uh, this M is given and this is given as 2R. If this is, a, if the radius, since the mass is proportional to the area here, mass is a planar mass, a sheet kind of mass. When the ra radius becomes half, mass becomes one fourth. This mass will become one by four and this becomes R. Rest all is similarly simple. I can easily calculate moment of inertia of the disk, which is your IB will equal to 1 by 2, mass into square, thus IB. And a similar way, I can calculate IM. I'm sorry, I've written C here. So this IC also we can calculate 1 by 2 M into 2 R square. If I subtract from this, this one, I get the moment of inertia of the uh, this shape here. And this is a simple principle we can apply in wherever uh, something like cavity is created. All cavity questions we can do in that way. And this is extremely good question, a past question in mains which has come. So and there could be several variations of similar question. So you have what we see here, seven identical disks. Now all the, you can see seven identical disks and you should understand here when we have seven identical disks, when you paste them, all disks will touch each other and centers will form a regular hexagon. Okay, they'll be all touching each other. Find the moment of inertia of the system. Each one is M into R. So each disk is mass M and there's seven of them here. We have to find moment of inertia system about an axis passing through point A. And how is this point A? If I connect the center. So it is lying on the somewhere here and figure indicates clearly. And how is this axis here? 
when I say axis like this, it is perpendicular to the plane of figure. This is like a z axis. So I have to find moment of inertia about this. How should I find whenever figure is symmetrical? Some of you start thinking I'll calculate for this, and then about this axis I'll calculate for these three, these three also at equal distance, parallel axis, but that's very complicated way. So just see how do we calculate here? See here, because symmetry, uh, uh, calculate moment of inertia about the center of mass here, for all system put together. And because symmetry, we are the center of all entire system, this is the center of mass here. So I'll calculate moment of inertia, all seven discs put together about this axis, passing through center of mass, perpendicular to plane of figure. And then I'll apply parallel axis theorem between these two. Okay, so let's see how we apply that. So to calculate moment of inertia of this axis, I'll calculate this central disk, moment of inertia is a disk, perpendicular spin is mi squared by two. And the second thing, what I notice, all six of them are equidistant from the axis. So all six of them will have equal moment of inertia. So I will calculate moment of inertia of one disk and multiply by six to get moment of inertia of remaining six. To calculate moment of inertia of this disk, suppose I want to calculate about this axis here, about this axis, I don't have formula for this axis O here. So first I have to calculate moment of inertia of this disk about axis perpendicular to this plane passing through C. And then is, this is the distance D here. This is the distance D. So what is the moment of inertia of uh, that disk here? Of the remaining six disks, all are distance two are here. So MI of each disk about its center mass, ICM, MR squared by two, because axis is perpendicular to the plane, plus M into square of the distance. Distance is two R. So that's the moment of inertia of each disk. All six, uh, so all seven disks now, what is moment of inertia? This term, central disk, six times all other disks, six into other two. I arrive at moment of inertia of the entire thing about central mass. If I rotate this about this axis, this is moment of inertia. But I need about A. Now I apply parallel axis theorem between O and A. Again, O and A, I need to know the distance. This from here to R, to R, 3 R. Distance is 3 R. And I'll apply, I know moment of inertia about this. IA will be equal to IO plus total mass of the system into 3R square. What is the total mass of the system? Not M. Total mass of the system is 7M. That's how it will rotate. That's what axis we need to find here. And what is moment of inertia about A? I center mass, which we have here. This is ICM into M into D square. And what is the corresponding figure? This is ICM. Mass is equal to 7M. And distance is 3R, and that's the moment of inertia about A. So this was among one of the, uh, see, moment of inertia is an important topic from exam point of view, for means at least, and several other competitive examination. And this is one of the little more tricky questions which have come. So we'll go through some of the trickier questions which have come in the past, and some of the questions have come are pretty simple and straightforward. Let's continue with that. So uh, something similar, cutting and removing, moment of inertia square lamina, about an axis is I. And so about an axis means perpendicular to plane of the figure. If another square is formed by joining the midpoints of the side and its side is cut and removed. So what we do here is something like this. First thing what we need to understand uh, whenever we talk about moment of inertia uh, of a lamina. So this is kind of a square sheet or a lamina which lies only in two dimension. So moment of inertia, let's understand what happens if the shape changes. The shape remaining same if the linear dimension changes here. Moment of inertia is proportional to m into L square for any to, to any shape here. Any it is valid for all shapes here. But uh, mass is proportional if uh, if it is any say like a square. If uh, sheet thickness or nature of sheet is not changing, there's something called mass per unit area. So mass will be proportional to uh, mass per unit area into L square term. And that's how mass will be proportional to. So I will be proportional to L raised to power four in case of two dimensional shapes. So what does it mean if moment of inertia of a square of side L about this axis is I, if the side becomes L by two, its moment of inertia will become one by two to the power four. Why two to the power four? It will become mass will become one by eight times and length will become one by two. So square of that one by Sorry, mass will become one by four times and uh, length part also becomes one. So basically it becomes per proportion to L by four. And uh, let's look at that, how do we use it? Uh, this is 
L by 4 only in case of a lamina. Similar thing you can think of if it is something like a sphere. If a sphere of radius R has moment of inertia I, for same material, if I form a smaller sphere of radius R by 2, what will happen is mass will become 1 by 8 times because their mass is proportional to cube of the linear dimension and then equal to 1 by 4 because of the uh, R term here. So our radius becomes half, the square of R become one fourth. So if I have a sphere of radius R by two made of the same material, then moment of inertia becomes the one by 32 times. So it becomes one by what which proportion L is to power five in case of three dimension. So let's use, and this is something useful. It can come in a variety of cases, this become useful. So let's uh, solve this case here. So this if uh, side of original square L, if uh, this, case, this, case, this is cut and removed, or say we are, this is what which has been cut and removed. That's what is given in the footage. So, what we need to do here, full sheet, I know the moment of inertia. What I need to do, I need to calculate the moment of inertia of the square which is cut and removed, which is shown in the white color here. To find this moment of inertia, I need to find is this dimension here. What would this dimension be? This side is L by 2. This side is L by 2. So is uh, hypotenuse, it will become equal to L by root 2. L by 2, it will become L by root 2. So how would moment of inertia of the remaining part will change? So I dash, um, um, I dash of the remaining part, I dash will be I. So see basically what we are using here, I by I dash. Shape is same, mass per unit area is same. So it is proportional to earlier it was L square, now it is L by root 2 square. That's the ratio. So, not L by root to power 4. So, what if that comes to? And then you can find an answer. But this is bad. So, what is comes to? It becomes equal to I by 4. So, moment of inertia of the part which is cut and removed is one fourth of the moment of inertia here. What is remaining? So, moment of inertia, remaining part is 3I by 4. And you can try a similar question if moment of inertia of a sphere about its axis is i. If a concentric sphere of radius r by 2 is cut and removed, what is the moment of inertia of the remaining part? This is something called radius of gyration. What is radius of gyration? It's a very small point. So similar to okay, similar to moment of inertia, radius of gyration also depends on axis of rotation. Okay, uh, sorry, not displays. I uh, sometimes make some mistake typing it. Uh, what is radius of gyration? Radius of gyration is if any shape similar to something similar to center of mass. What is the concept of center of mass? For application of laws of motion, which is the point where should I place the entire mass? Similar way, when what is radius of gyration? Radius of gyration is see, mass is distributed over the space. At what distance from axis of rotation? Should I place the entire mass so that moment of inertia does not change? So if any axis, whatever shape it is rotating, it has certain moment of inertia i. What is the distance where entire mass k distance, if I place the entire mass here, if I place entire mass, moment of inertia becomes mk square. mk square has to be equal to i. That's how we find moment of uh, radius of gyration. So to find radius of gyration about an axis, we just equate moment of inertia about that axis with mk square. That is, so if I place with respect to that axis, if I place the entire mass at a distance k, it will have same moment of inertia. Very easy to find. Let's look at some more question, conceptual questions of moment of inertia. If a rod of a, a if density of this rod AB and its density is increases linearly from A to B. So I could have also written what is lambda x, lambda x is lambda 0, x by L. So lambda is density is increasing linearly from one end to the other. Okay, and O is the midpoint, O is the physical midpoint, and C is the center of mass. So if you have four axes which pass through A, B, O, and C, A and B are two ends, O is the center of the rod, and C is the center of mass. All are perpendicular to length of the rod. What will be the order of moment of inertia are about these four axes? Can we arrange them in increasing order? So let's first understand what those axes are. So A, B, O are clear. Where would point C come? Will C lie? Where would C lie? Will, will C lie at the center? 
this side or this side. Very easily, since the mass on the right side is more because the density is increasing, and we can also can find the position of central mass. We can easily find the position of central mass, and that will come equal to actually 12 by 3. So this is where the C will come. C will come somewhere on the right hand side. So heavier side, it will be towards B. And if I draw four axes parallel to each other, all four axes are parallel to each other. So if I draw four axes here, all the four axes, perpendicular axes, will look like something like this. So let's understand out of the four axes, which one will have minimum moment of inertia? The one which is passing through central mass will always have minimum moment of inertia. But any other axis, I mean to D square. All axes parallel to each other, hence moment of inertia will increase as the distance from central mass increases. So least moment of inertia, I C. And then which is the next mirror from here compared to this, this is the next nearest one. Then this is further distance and this is the further distance. The order will be IC least, IO, IB, and IE. That's order of moment of inertia. Okay, and this is another good example. And this is something you pay really attention. This is a question, this kind of question. Very often people make a mistake. Let's understand what. There are two things we need to understand in this question. Let's see we understand both of them. Radius of gyration of solid hemisphere. This is solid hemisphere of mass m radius r about an axis parallel to the diameter and a distance of 3 r by 4. So this, if I take this axis, what is radius of gyration? So radius of gyration for memory come across radius of gyration. For a moment, I'll forget radius of gyration. I'm only interested in finding IAB. Moment I find IAB, I'll write equal to mk square, I get radius of gyration. So basically, the question is equally finding moment of inertia about this axis. And what is this axis? This is at a distance of 3r by 4. So first of all, how would I find? There's no direct formula. So I have to use some of the known formula of it. I know the formula only, only of a solid sphere. What is moment of inertia of solid sphere? Moment of inertia of hemisphere mass about its diameter. So if I don't remember anything, I visualize this half a sphere. I can play, place another, I can complete, I place another sphere here another hemisphere, so that it becomes a full sphere. When it becomes full sphere, mass becomes 2m. And whatever moment of inertia it will have when it becomes full sphere, each hemisphere will be half of it. So we should understand that one. For that logic, very easily I can conclude, moment of hemisphere also is equal to 2 by 5 mr square, m being with the mass of the hemisphere. Well, this would be, so if it, it, what is this equal to? This is nothing but half the moment of inertia of a full sphere of mass, 2m. If a complete full sphere, it becomes 2m. So the hemisphere, yes, this mass is 2 by 5 mr square, same as hemisphere. And now we need to use parallel axis to find, uh, we need to find IC. So this about this axis passing through this here, moment of inertia, we know. So this axis I know, I need to find about IAB. But I cannot apply parallel axis to between two axes. Reason I can't apply uh, this axis passing through uh, this center, physical center of spherical surface of hemisphere is not the center of mass anymore. It is center of mass for the full sphere, not for hemisphere. So what I need to do to apply parallel axis theorem, first I need to take an axis parallel to this passing through center of mass. I can apply parallel axis theorem between this and this. When I apply parallel axis theorem, I find IC. Then again, I apply parallel axis theorem between this and this. So I have to apply parallel axis theorem twice to arrive at moment of inertia about AB. Was first thing, I apply IO. Is equal to what is IO? Actually, IO is equal to IC plus the distance between central mass and this. And what is the position of central mass in case of hemisphere? That is 3R by 8, which one should remember. So this m into d square, that is my IC term. And IC will be lower than IO. And after I find IC, again I apply between IC and IAB. What is IAB is equal to IC plus M into distance between these two axes. Distance between two axes also is equal to 3R by 8. The total distance is 3R by 4. So this, uh, this is a term here. So if I substitute IC from here, this term to cancel out, IAB is actually equal to IO. And the reason is IO because uh, we can uh, understand that way also. Moment of inertia about parallel axis, which are equidistant for center mass will always be equal. And these two axes are equidistant for center mass. Thus, a moment of inertia about IO is equal to IAB. Okay, 
Uh, let's come to one more case. Yes, Pradesh and uh, what doubt you have? Sir, I didn't understand the like the moment of inertia of the same you know, the hemisphere sir, in this case. Is okay. it one by five okay. mass square? Okay. Or? Let's take. We are if we have same density, similar material. If we have a full sphere, okay. What will the moment of inertia of full sphere? Let's go quickly go through. Two by five. Two by five, mass mass two by five into mass into uh, radius square. What will mass if I complete full sphere? It will become two m. Oh, yes, sir. It's two m. Yes, sir. Okay. This is for the full sphere. Now. Will two two hemispheres are symmetrical about this axis or not? Yes, so whatever, it will be half. Whatever moment of inertia lower half have, upper half also will have same moment of inertia. So yes. if this is a full sphere, moment of inertia of hemisphere about the same axis will be half of this i here. What is the half of i? It becomes equal to two by five m r square. Yes, I got it. Thank you. Okay. Now come to one more thing: moment of inertia of pin rod about an axis passing through center, but not perpendicular to the rod. It's something like this. If I wrote, you see, just understand here. If I rotate about perpendicular axis, it rotates in separate way. But if I have an axis which makes an angle theta, this how it will rotate. So at any point of time, this vertical rod is making an angle theta. So if I have this kind of moment of inertia, there's some change. Moment of inertia not m l square by 12 anymore. So mass, see just to understand here. So earlier, when was see if I take a small piece of mass here, random piece of mass, which was earlier at a distance of x from the center. If distance from the center is x, but its distance, if it was rotated about perpendicular axis, moment of inertia of this small piece would have been equal to dm into x square. Now because this axis perpendicular distance is not x, what is the perpendicular distance x? This is the perpendicular distance. So perpendicular distance of a particle, which was at a distance x from the center, becomes x sine theta. So what has happened? Distance has reduced by a factor. So when I am x cos theta, so in place of x, now it will become all distance have got multiplied by sine theta. So similar way, moment of inertia also becomes equal to m l square by 12 into sine square theta. A simple integrated integration will get that term. In place of x, it gets multiplied by constant term sine theta. So when I integrate dm into x square, it becomes sine square theta. It gets multiplied by sine square theta. Thus, one way we can understand. Second way we can understand here: see, whatever mass is there, I can rearrange the mass without changing the distance from the axis. If this is the x-axis, so whatever mass is here, I can shift this mass to at this point here. If I shift like this, all this mass parallel to the axis without changing its distance here, it will become a rod of length equal to. It will become equal to rod of length l sine theta. So it becomes a lot of rod of length l sine theta. Uh, that's moment of inertia we get. So moment of inertia if angle between and just understand that one. If rod is perpendicular, it means theta becomes 90 degree. It reduces to m l square by 12. If axis lies along the rod, what is moment of inertia? If axis is along the rod itself, if I rotate, all particles on the rod will be rotated with zero radius. Moment of inertia is zero. So theta is equal to zero. Moment of inertia is zero. Axis of rotation is along the rod, and as theta keeps changing, that's a uh, that's moment of inertia. It varies as uh, square of the sine of the angle. It will be. Moment of inertia of a square. It has some special property. Less moment of inertia. Let's understand. I have done this earlier. Here, revise moment of inertia. Let's take this one. I A B is one axis passing through its center parallel to two sides, and we. What is the moment of inertia it will have here? This moment of inertia will be equal to moment of inertia of a rod of similar length. So I A B you should know by now. I A B should be equal to m l square by 12. L being this dimension. We are done for rectangle. And similarly, if I take another axis which is perpendicular to that, C D axis. This also will be equal to same. I A B and I C D are equal. So if I take a uh, I O which is perpendicular to both, that will be equal to Twice IAB. These are some of these two. So we should. This is all what we know, and that comes equal to m l square by six. Okay, that's how the moment of inertia of a square is. Now we are asking something else. What is asked here? If I take axis, sorry, don't take a CD. Let's take a CD. Okay, now CD I am using elsewhere. 
So this lets a PQ. Okay. Now, if I take an axis CD, which is lying in the plane of the square, but is making angle theta form uh, this axis. If I take x axis, this angle theta. And just visualize. So if I keep a stick, thin stick in the plane of a square and rotate this square, just you can imagine how that square will rotate. What is the moment of inertia? So I, when I take CD, I have taken one more axis, axis here, ST, uh, uh, ST also. So I have taken two axes, one is CD and other is a, a perpendicular to this. This also makes an angle theta. And uh, we can understand here whatever moment of inertia, ICD, even ST also moment of inertia is same because symmetry. There's no difference between this axis and this axis. So if I take and CD makes angle theta with AB, ST makes an angle theta with PQ. So ICD will be equal to I. ST. Both will be equal. And what is ICD plus IST? ICD plus IST by perpendicular axis theorem, IO is equal to ICD plus IST. Two mutually perpendicular axis, which is equal to two ICD. And we know IO are same. So basically, and to what is IO? IO is equal to ML square by 12 which tells you what is ICD, ICD is same as IAB, which basically means uh, this important property and this is several question can be formed based on this. Any axis I take in the plane of a square, any axis which is passing to the center, if it's lying in the plane of the square, its moment of inertia is same, which is same equal to ML square by six. So uh, we can apply it in some case here. See this case here, uh, now we have taken uh, this square here. Uh, uh, what we need to find, mass is given, length is given. If I have to find moment of inertia about an axis, which is passing through the edge, lying in the plane of the square, making an angle 15 degree with the side. How do I find moment of inertia? I will use parallel axis theorem. Two principles I'm going to use here. Moment of inertia of a square about any axis in this plane and passing the center uh, is ml square by 12. That's one thing I'm going to use. Okay. And for these values which are given here, ml square by 12 comes equal to 8 by 11. So I'll use parallel axis theorem. If this makes certain angle 15 degree, if I take parallel axis passing the center, this also makes 15 degree. But we have already shown it doesn't matter as long as passing the center, this moment of inertia is known ml square by 12. Now to find moment of inertia about this axis A, I need perpendicular distance between the two. What is the perpendicular distance between the two? To find perpendicular distance, I this is what I found. I have to drop a perpendicular from C. I know this distance and we know this angle. This angle is 15 degree, this is 45. So this angle is 60 degree. And this is equal to L by root two. Hence, perpendicular distance, if I drop a perpendicular from C onto other line, because I need to find value of D here, that D will come equal to L by 2 sine 60. That's the only thing which is important here. So two things I have used here. One is uh, any orientation axis lying in the plane of the square passing to center, the moment of inertia is same. And you used pa parallel axis theorem. Okay. Uh, moment of inertia of cylinder about its axis perpendicular to the axis. We know moment of inertia about a cylinder. About it, axis equal to mr square by 2. This axis is perpendicular. So we take a cylinder and keep an axis perpendicular to its axis passing through mid by center. How do I calculate? So uh, if I have to calculate moment of inertia of a cylinder, I can consider a cylinder to be several small disks. If I cut into uh, several sections, it is like some, it is an infinite number of small disk. And let's see this disk, a random disk I take, this disk is at a distance x from the axis of rotation. This mass is a dm and width is mass is dm and width is dx here. So if I calculate moment of inertia, one disk, a random disk, about this axis, add it up, that will be the moment of inertia of the cylinder. So moment of inertia of the cylinder will be sum of moment of inertia of all such random disk. Let me calculate moment of inertia of the disk about this axis. So first I have to, I don't know the formula, I'll take a parallel axis. And parallel axis will lie in the plane of this 
circular disk. The parallel axis will lie in the plane of the circular disk. So what is the moment of inertia of this small disk here? Moment of inertia formula of the disk is mR square by 4 in the plane of the disk. So dm is the mass, radius is r only, r square by 4. That's the moment of inertia about this axis. Then I have to calculate moment of inertia about this axis. I need to apply parallel axis theorem about this axis. m into dm into x square. This is moment of inertia of a random disk. You have to add up everything, I have to integrate. So when I integrate here, you know, there's nothing else very well. This, this whole thing integrate becomes m, m square, mr square by 4. And this m also, if you add it up, it becomes a dm into x square. If I integrate from one end to the other, it is very similar to integra integration of a rod. Because this is how we arrive at moment of inertia of a rod. If mass is placed, dm uh, from a length plus l by 2 minus l by 2. So this term will indicate mR square by 4, and other term will come equal to ml square by 2. So that's what the, and, and similar way, we can find out moment of inertia of a hollow cylinder. If it is hollow cylinder, it will come ml square by 2 plus ml square by 2. So that's what I have, uh, I think this has packed everything as per moment of inertia. I think I've covered all the points which are relevant for moment of inertia. And uh, I'll send a worksheet. And 